Hello everyone, welcome again in Angman YouTube channel. So in this video, we will continue our learning on Prosper software. And in this video, we will perform nodal analysis for oil well with coil tubing gas leak. All right, so it will be very interesting and important. We will perform nodal analysis in an oil well with coil tubing gas leak. All right, so let's go. We open this section. You can follow me. Fluid, oil, and water, method, black oil, separator, single stage separator, no emulsion, PVT warning, disable warning. All right, and then for the water viscosity, we use default correlation, viscosity model, Newtonian fluid. And for the well section, flow type, we will use tubing flow and well type producer. For the artificial leaf, now this is important. We open the drop down. Then we go to this one, coil tubing gas leaf. And you can see the flow type will be disabled because we will use coil tubing here. And for the type, we will use no friction loss in coil tubing. But sometimes we can also use this one, friction loss in coil tubing. But let's start simple. We assume no friction in the coil tubing, all right? And then for the calculation type, we can leave it as it is. We assume offshore system, rough approximation, and for the range, full system. Default for brine properties correlation, well completion case hold, and send control none. For the reservoir inflow type, single branch, no gas coning. All right, so we can click done. All right, and then we will open the PVT section. All right, we will wait for the system to be ready. After this section, we will go to the PVT section. All right, here we go. We go to the second section, open it. All right, so this is the PVT input data window. You can follow me for the solution GOR 800 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel, oil gravity 37 with gas gravity of 0 0.75, water salinity of 25,000 ppm, no H2S, no CO2, no nitrogen. And for the bubble pressure, bubble point pressure, solution gas oil ratio, and oil formation volume factor, we will use Glasso. And for the oil viscosity correlation, we will use Bill et al. correlation. And actually, if you have the laboratory data, you can also perform PVT matching. First, you open this match data, and you input your data, the temperature, and also the bubble point. And after that, you can perform PVT matching. But we will skip it for this video so that we can focus on the coil tubing itself. All right, so we can click cancel. And for this, this section, we can click done. All right, so from here, we will go to IPR section. We open this section. All right, so in this video, we will use composite reservoir model to build or to generate the inflow performance relationship. So we can click this one. All right. This is very easy. The reservoir pressure, for example, we assume 3, 4, 50 PSIG with reservoir temperature of 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Water cut, let's assume quite high, 80% no compaction permeability model, and no relative permeability data. And for the reservoir model data, test rate, for example, 10,000 stock tank barrel per day at bottom hole pressure of 1970 PSIG with this water cut. Okay, you can validate, click the validate button. The IPR data set is valid, all right. So now we can click calculate. 
this is the AOF or maximum flow rate. So 17,180 stock tank barrel per day. We can click plot results, X axis variable rate, Y axis variable. We are interested only for the pressure for the time being. So we can uncheck the temperature, highlight the pressure and then click done. All right, so this is our IPR. Y axis is pressure, X axis is rate in stock time barrel per day. Okay, so this is our IPR. You can also click, for example, the plot settings, cursor data, show all. You can see the value of the cursor, right? And this is the X axis value and y axis value this is the flow rate and this is the bottom hole pressure all right so far so good so we can click finish done and we are done with ipr section okay so from here we can skip this section for now and we go to this equipment data section double click and we will edit some input data section, deviation survey, downhole equipment, and geothermal gradient, and also gauge details or not, average heat capacities. We will check it. So click edit. All right, so the first thing is the deviation survey. You can follow me, zero at zero, measured depth and true vertical depth, both are in fit. And then 600, also 600. 1,005, 1,000. 40, 75, 4,000 feet. 7,700 at 7,500 feet. And lastly, 9,275 at 9,000 feet. Okay, so far so good. You can see the cumulative displacement and the angle and we can click plot. All right, so we created a deviated well. Finish, very good, click done. And the next section is the downhole equipment. Okay, so let's go Christmas tree at 600 feet. And then we add up a tubing, measure depth down to 1,000 feet with tubing inside diameter of 4.052, tubing inside roughness of 0 0.0006. All right, and rate multiplier one. And the next one is the subsurface safety valve. So open the drop down. SSSV with two bank inside diameter of 3.72, red multiplier one. And the next is tubing again, down to 9,000 feet. The end of the tubing with the same inside diameter, the same tubing inside roughness. Right, red multiplier is also one. And lastly, casing. All right, it will end up at 9275, casing inside diameter of 6.4 with default casing inside roughness and red multiplier of one. All right, so far so good. We can click done. All right, and then the geothermal gradient, you can follow my data for the overall heat transfer coefficient, 8.64. And then for the temperature, formation measured depth and the temperature, formation temperature, zero X at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. At Christmas tree depth, the temperature is 40. And for the reservoir depth, 9275. 
the formation temperature is 210. And you can check the gradient by clicking the plot button. All right. Finish. Done. Lastly, just to check average heat capacities for oil, gas, and water, we can use the default values. All right, so far so good. We can click done and check summary. This is the table. And you can also click drawdown hole to check the well sketch, Christmas tree, casing, SSSV, casing, and lastly, the casing also. Actually, this is tubing section, safety valve, and also tubing. Okay, we can click done, done, done. And we wait for the system to be ready. Yeah, you can see the well sketch here. All right. And then from here, we can go to this section, coil tubing section. First, we need to input the information for gas lift gas data. Let's say gas lift gas gravity of 0 0.7. All right, and then no H2S, no CO2, no nitrogen. We can leave it as it is first for the GLR injected. And then for the coil tubing data, coil tubing inside diameter, for example, 0 0.8 inches. Coil tubing roughness or coil tubing thickness, I mean, 0 0.2. With coil tubing inside roughness as well as the outside roughness, we can leave it as per default. Okay, we can leave the coil tubing specified tab as it is for now. From here, we can click done. All right, and from here, we can go to design section, go to coil tubing gas lift section. All right, All right. so this is the coil tubing gas lift design window. We need to input the input parameters and you can follow me. First is the maximum gas available. So we assume we only have five million standard cubic feet per day. And also for the maximum gas during unloading, the same five. All right. And for the flowing top node pressure or the wellhead pressure, 250 PSIG, for example. And at unloading, the top node pressure or the wellhead pressure, we assume the same. All right. So unloading means the unloading operation or after the rig job, right? After the completion or after the work over, there will be completion fluid, killing fluid, and we need to unload that. All right. Whereas for the flowing top node pressure, it means continuous production or continuous operation. Okay. So for the operating injection pressure, we assume 2,200 PSIG. Also for the kickoff injection pressure at unloading process, the same we assume, 2,200. All right. And then for the desired pressure drop across valve, 50 PSI with maximum depth of injection, we set at 8,500. Okay, so you remember the end of our tubing is at 9,000 feet. So the maximum depth of injection we can set at 8,500 feet. All right, so for the water cut, of course, 80% and static gradient of load fluid, for example, killing fluid or completion fluid, it will be heavier a bit than water. So let's set it at 0 0.46. So for fresh water or brine, it is usually 0 0.433. So for the killing fluid, we use usually heavier water, heavier brine. So let's assume 0 0.46 with total GOR 800 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. Okay, so far so good for the options. Design rate method, let's set it at calculated from max production with maximum liquid rate, for example, 25,000, or maybe as per the IPR, let's set it at 
17,000 stock tank barrel per day. All right, and then for the check rate conformance with IPR, of course, use IPR for unloading, yes. Orifice sizing on calculated pressure drop at orifice, usually we prefer that. The other is the minimum pressure drop across orifice. So I prefer calculated pressure drop at orifice. And for the vertical lift correlation, we use petroleum experts correlation. So you can leave it as per default. And also for the surface pipe correlation, we can leave it as it is. All right, so far so good. We go to continue. All right, we need to be careful here. So we need to click this one, this button, get right. Okay, so wow, interesting, right? So we can check, this is the GLR injected, standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. All right, this is the GLR. This is the liquid rate, 8,297. All right, with the oil rate, assuming 80% of water cut. This is the VLP pressure and IPR pressure. This is the standard deviation, design rate, all right? Five million standard cubic feet per day. We assume maximum gas available. And if we assume that, if we assume that, then the oil production will be this one. All right, so far so good. We can check at plot. All right. So the purple line is the this one liquid performance curve and this one the blue curve is the oil performance curve and these red boxes are the calculated points all right so we can concentrate on this blue curve so you can see as we increase the gas injection rate the fluid produced or the oil produced tends to increase but actually only from zero to about two or three million standard cubic feet per day, but after four mm SEF per day, the increase is not significant. It is quite negligible, right? Okay, so if we are talking about optimum gas injection rate, maybe three is the answer, all right? So maybe three million standard cubic feet per day is the optimum gas lift injection rate. Okay, we can maximize, right? You can see as we increase the gas lift injection rate, the oil production tends to increase, of course. But this one, this number maybe, 4 million standard cubic feet per day is the optimum gas lift injection rate. And you can see above 8.5, the oil production tends to decrease as we increase the gas lift injection rate. Okay, so far so good. We click done. All right, so from here, we can click design. Click. All right, very easy, right? So we can check, this is the measure depth through vertical depth. This is the pressure at this depth, the temperature and gas injection pressure. We can check the plot. We prefer TVD through vertical depth. X axis include pressure and temperature. We click done. All right, beautiful. So this is our design picture. TVD through vertical depth versus pressure in X axis. And you can see, you can look up temperature also in X axis. All right, so for the Blue line is the pressure. This green line is temperature. The orange line is the unloading gradient. Whereas the red line is the operating gas gradient. The gas lift gas gradient, right? And this blue line, all right? This 
gentle blue line is the maximum operating depth. So you can see this is our design picture actually. And kick off injection depth, the purple line, all right, which overlies the maximum operating depth. All right, beautiful. So we can click done. All right, and we can check the results. Design liquid rate, 77,704 stock tank barrel per day. And the design oil rate, 1540 stock tank barrel per day. Assuming we use 5 million standard cubic feet per day gas lift injection rate. This is the actual injected gas rate, 4.8. All right. Actual injection pressure, 2,200 with orifice size of 21 per 64 inches, kickoff injection depth, and maximum operating depth, this one, 5,413 feet. Okay, so far so good, right? So we can click done, and we click done. All right, just checking once again. We can use this one. You can remember this number, 5413. All right, click done, done. All right, and then we continue opening this window. All right, so for the gas lift details, gas lift method, right? We can follow, you can follow me, specified injection depth, coil tubing specified depth, this should be inputted manually. So the depth is the 5,413 feet. All right, and gas injection pressure, 2,200 PSIG with pressure drop across valve 50. All right, so you can take this number from the design section, okay? The gas lift method should be changed to specified injection depth. Be careful here, right? In the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, okay? And the design depth, injection pressure, and pressure drop across valve should be manually inputted. Okay, so for the coil tubing specified depth, you can check again the design section. Whereas for the gas injection pressure, also the pressure drop across valve, you also take that from design section or you can memorize it, all right? From here, we can click done. All right, and we are actually ready to perform nodal analysis. Go to calculation, system, IPR, VLP. All right, so for the top node pressure, 250 PSIG, water cut 80%, total GOR of 800 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. Surface equipment correlation as per default, all right? And the vertical lift correlation, petroleum experts too. Rate method, the rate method should be changed to automatic geometric as this will give us more definition with the unstable region of the VLP curve. And for the left-hand intersection, disallow and we can leave it as it is. All right, and then we can click calculate, show calculating data. All right, very easy, right? And we can check if we change the surface equipment correlation, for example, to backside drill, calculate again, no effect, right? So this is the result, so we can achieve liquid rate of 2,132 stock tank barrel per day with this system with oil production rate of 426 stock tank barrel per day. All right. And we can create cases or we can actually check this one plot, system plot, plot all cases, y-axis variables, VLP pressure and IPR pressure. Click done, all right. The same result, right? Of course, this purple line or pink line is the VLP. 
whereas the orange line is the IPR pressure. All right, finish. And we can create cases actually. We open the drop down section. We can check at gas lift gas injection rate starting from zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Right? For the sake of example, done. Calculate, show calculating data. All right. Beautiful. Let's check it from zero, zero rate. All right. Two million standard cubic feet per day. The result is significant. If we inject the gas lift injection rate at rate of two million standard cubic feet per day, the impact is significant. So we can achieve almost 6,000 stock tank barrel per day in liquid rate and oil rate of 1,200 stock tank barrel per day. So the results previously we get is actually assuming no gas lift injection rate, for example. So the results we get previously is actually the result with zero million standard cubic feet per day gas lift injection rate, which means no gas lift actually, all right? Zero rate because let's check again at zero rate. This is our results previously, okay? So in order to evaluate the coil tubing gas lift, make sure you use the cases and input the gas lift injection rate, the coil tubing gas lift injection rate. In our case, we use two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. But actually we will use five as per recommendation, almost 5 million standard cubic feet per day. So let's do it again, cases, four, we make it five, six, eight, 10, and lastly, 12. Done. Let's do it again. Okay. 0, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. Calculate. Beautiful. 0, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. Let's check it at the sensitivity plot. This is the pressure against gas lift gas injection rate. Click variables, select oil rate. Done. All right. So this is the gas lift injection optimization plot or sensitivity plot. Oil rate against gas lift gas injection rate. So you can see with zero rate, we can still actually achieve oil rate of 400 stock tank barrel per day as per table, you can check it, right? You can check it, for example, done at zero rate, right? We can achieve 426, go back to sensitivity plot. And then as we increase the gas lift injection rate, oil rate also increase, but after around six actually, the oil rate will decrease as we increase the gas lift injection rate. So we can select either four as the optimum gas lift injection rate, or maybe three with maximum five, right? So this is the oil rate result with five million standard cubic feet per day gas lift injection rate. Okay, we can click done. And of course we can check the plot system plot, plot all cases, done, all right. This is for the no gas lift injection rate, or let's say natural flow. And this is for the gas injection rate, starting from two, four, five, six, eight, ten, 10, and 12. All right, so far so good, finish. Let's check it if the water cut increases to 85. Calculate. 
all right? In this case, the well will die with no injection. With zero injection rate, the well will die. But with two million standard cubic feet per day of gas leaf injection rate, the well can flow and giving us oil rate of 844 stock tank barrel per day. So you can understand now the impact of coil tubing gas leaf. All right, so let's recap. So in this video, we created an oil well and we equip it with the coil tubing gas leaf. We construct the IPR using composite IPR model, which is actually quite similar with Fogel equation. All right, and then we design the coil tubing. Let's check it again. We design, we use this window. We design it quite carefully, right? We provide the maximum gas available, wellhead pressure, operating injection pressure, also kickoff injection pressure, pressure drop across valve, maximum depth of injection, right? And we perform the design and calculation by the Prosper. And after getting the coil tubing parameters, we design it, we install it in the system, in the well. And lastly, we perform nodal analysis as well as sensitivity analysis. We vary the gas leaf injection rate and we get the optimum gas leaf injection rate. All right, so I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the video is useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next Prosper videos. Thank you.